Sergei Lavrov is the third foreign minister to visit Ethiopia in just few days difference. He's here in Addis for three days official visit following his US and UAE counterparts. After his meeting with Ethiopian authorities, Lavrov said Russia is ready to work with Ethiopia on multi-dimensional areas. We have agreed to give an additional boost to the work of the Intergovernmental Commission for the sake of implementing joint projects in a number of domains, such as energy, including nuclear energy, hydropower, biological research, direct flight connection, and many others. Ethiopia's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Warkana Gabeyo, said Russia was and will always be an important ally to his country. And all right, Shalom. This is a hard one by Yasha Allah of the GMS Lions Den Camp. Want to say Kal Halayim, La Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Harakah Kodash, Ma'ama. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS, and Shalom to you, Akim, and Nakwatim around the four corners of the earth, and children that believe in sincerity and the truth. And you know, hey man, prophecy coming to pass, man. The Apostle Har put it out there that this is the year of prophecy. Now you got Ethiopia and Russia talking about nuclear talks. You know, and joining up and, and building nuclear uh, facilities or enhancing and enhancing their nuclear their nuclear reactors and facilities in uh, Ethiopia. And Ethiopia is one of the biggest African armies, uh, militaries in Africa. All right, and it's spoken of in the scriptures. And this is all bringing about the end time scenario when. Um, all right, the end, the end time scenario that the Most High is bringing about, you know, uh, to bring his prophecies to pass, man. World War Three. All right, the last war, the, the war of all wars, to end the wickedness upon the earth. All right, and it's prophesied that Russia is going to be an ambassador or or a big brother or a guide or a leader, you know, an investor to Africa. All right, a, a guard unto them. This is Ezekiel 38 and 1. Actually, 38 and 2. Son of man, set thy face against Gog. That's um, basically the Kremlin, right? Uh, Russia. The land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, right? That's that whole USSR area, all right? Um, which today, again, called the Soviet Union. And say, thus saith Yahweh, power behold i am against thee O god russia the lord said he's against russia even though he's going to use russia he's still going to destroy russia in the end all right the chief prince of meshach and tubal i will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws and i will bring thee forth and all thine army horses and horsemen all of them clothed with all sorts of armor even a great company with bucklers and shields all of them handling swords so the Lord going to make Russia use all of its army in this war. I right? ain't going to be able to hold nothing back, you know. So he's going to make Russia unleash everything that it has to fight against America and Israel and parts of uh, Europe. Right? The dragon. So it says um, the country that's going to be under Russia is Persia. Persia is the Iranians. Um, me and the Akim in this camp were talking about it earlier, you know, when Iran was turned into um, uh, Persia. Uh, uh, well, Persia was turned into Iran, uh, I think it was 1935, right? They declared that anybody that wanted to do any type of uh, uh, deals with them, uh, you know, any type of um, dealings with, with Persia, you know, they had to. They had to consider. They had to uh, call Persia the Persians, the Iranians, meaning the word Iranians. Iran means nobles. All right, call them nobles or rich. How about that? <laughs> so uh, that's what the Iranians are called, Persians. All right, the Persian Gulf is right there. Now you have Ethiopia getting involved. Of course, you know Libya is already against America, man. They, they, you know, they're against America uh, because of what they did to Gaddafi. And so on and so on to that country. And it says, um, all of them with shield and helmet. All right, meaning fully def full defense, full of defense shields, full technology, all right, fully protected. All right, uh, you know, because they got this whole arms race going on and enhancing their weapons, weaponry. 
right? And uh, Russia is the one that's supplying these places, and China's supplying these places, man. And they're passing missiles around and different defenses and uh, technology. All right. And uh, it says, Gomer and all his bands, the House of Togomar of the North Quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. That's talking about Turkey. And it says, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. So Russia is a guard unto these all these foreign nations right here, man. All right. Now Ethiopia is involved. Because you got a Russia and Iran tied to Ethiopia. And Ethiopia is against America. And Ethiopia is a strong-ass army. When Esau uh, conquered that land, colonized uh, Africa, was, was stealing, stealing slaves, Israelite slaves from Africa, Ethiopia was one of the places that stood their ground. All right? And, um, you know, Esau didn't even try to take them in slavery, man. You know, they only went after the Israelites. But Ethiopia, they still stand today as a strong army, a strong country, a strong military. Uh, e even though, um, you know, they're in poverty because you got the Rothschild, they stole up all the money. They stole up all the goods and the things that Ethiopia, the Ethiopians did to our people, you know. Um, and then, and, and, uh, you know, all these damn Canaanites, the Lord said what? All right, this is Genesis 9 and 22, because um, them damn Ethiopians, they go back to Ham or, 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 or Cush, or to be the original Cushites, all right, if I'm not mistaken. But that ain't the point of this lesson. Um, you know, Ham, that's, that was their forefather, but the Lord said they're cursed people. All right, they got a seat in the United Nations. They got all the riches and wealth, but the Lord said they're about to lose that. Anybody that's wealthy in this society, they're going to lose it, man. And what do you have after that? Those nations aren't promised any type of hope or faith or salvation or wisdom. They're, you know, they're promised a, um, a, 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 a form of living in the kingdom. You know, just a, just a regular form of being um, heathen nations, and regular nations. All right. At the thousand years, they'll get a, a place in the kingdom to where they'll have food and regular living, you know, regular life. But they're going to they gonna get punishment too, man, in the kingdom, man. These damn Ethiopians, they're going to be put to death too, man. Thus say if you how about shit, I was shy. Them dirty, stinking Africans, man. Everybody want to be African, but them Ethiopians don't give a damn about you Negroes. All right? Uh, I ain't going to say all of them, all right? Because some of those are our people over there, uh, Israelites. Genesis 9 and 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, the father of Canaan, the father of Canaan. Now, let me get that. All right, this is from uh, the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. This is Ham, the youngest son. The definition of Ham, because you know how the Noah came, uh, Ham, Japheth, and Shem. All right? And that's what restarted the nations upon the earth. And then they came down off of Mount Ararat. They spread out throughout and colonized different lands, you know? Um, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, Born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans and Canaanites, man. So it's saying that the Negroes were dark race, too. All right. Because if you read, um. Uh, Hebrews 7 and 14, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it says Yahweh was from the tribe of Judah. But if you read Revelation 1 and 13, it says he was a dark-skinned man. But he's from the tribe of Judah. These are different people. But the word Ithiops means what? Burnt face. That's what he means by the dark races. All right? So he's the progenitor. Ham is the progenitor of the Ethiopians as well, and the Egyptians, and Canaanites, and Libyans. The Libyans, too. All right, so you damn Libyans, y'all about to get judgment. So it says right here, Genesis 9 and 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told him, told his two brethren without. All right, one of the top homosexuals on the earth is the damn Africans, man, and Esau. All right, now two thirds of our people. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward 
and covered the nakedness of their fathers and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall thou be unto his brethren. All right, so that's what they're going to be, man. They're going to be a servant of servants, you know. This is uh, 26. And he said, Blessed be Yahweh power of Shem. And the name, too. That's what it means, the name. Shem, all right? That's what we come through. All right? And Canaan shall be his servant. <laughs> all right? Because, you know, all these African nations, man, they got all these false idols and false gods, man. And, you know, they do the whole tribal mark thing, man. The Ethiopians, they cut themselves and shit. You know, they be doing homosexuality and bestiality, all kind of shit, man. But then they go into, around Esau and try to act all civilized, you know. But the Lord watching all of that. And the Lord got a judgment coming for you, damn Ethiopians. But it's, but it's prophecy that's happening because the Ethiopians are coming forward into this whole nuclear talks now, into nuclear deals and nuclear facilities with Russia. The the guard that's, that, that's guarding them, man, you know. Uh, this is Zephaniah 2 and 11. Yahweh will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him. Uh, worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. So all these heathens gonna worship Yahweh in that day, man. They're gonna they're gonna come up to the to the to the um the house of Yahweh and 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 beg for for his children, the elect. To have mercy on them, man. Beg for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah to have mercy. And they're going to try to learn the ways of the Father and learn the laws, man. And they're going to be forced upon these damn people. All right, so it says what? Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword, man. All right, so the Lord got a judgment coming for you Ethiopians, man, and you Africans. Russia was and will always be an important ally to his country, and history has proved Moscow's friendship to Ethiopia. Your visit is a much anticipated moment in the long journey of friendship between Ethiopia and the Russia, Russian Federation. The visit is fitting occasion to the commemoration of 120 years of Ethiopian Russian diplomatic relationship. And then History has proved Moscow's friendship to Ethiopia. Your visit is a much anticipated moment in the long journey of friendship between Ethiopia and the Russia, Russian Federation. The visit is fitting occasion to the commemoration of 120 years of Ethiopian Russian diplomatic relationship. And then the scoop of the day Russia has proposed to build a nuclear energy facility to Ethiopia. The facility will serve a peaceful purposes. Right now, talks are ongoing on establishing the nuclear technology center in Ethiopia on the basis of already existing Russian design research reactors. All right, so what does that mean? Russia is the new peacekeeper in the world. They, it used to be America and now you got China as the as the banking operating as the banking elite on their side under the uh, dealing with the Warsaw Pact. But then you have Russia as the muscle now. You have uh, like you have muscle America as the spearhead for NATO. You have Russia being the peacekeeper in the world now, man. All right, setting up facilities and, and arming these uh, these smaller nations. That's why these smaller nations saying what according to the scriptures, they saying let the weak say I am strong. All right, this is Joel 3 and 1. For behold, in those days and that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. All right, Judah and Jerusalem are in captivity around the four corners of the earth in different lands and the different people and the different systems. All right. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. So he is doing that right now, man. The Valley of Jehoshaphat is over there in Syria today. That's where all them nations are gathered at, all their armies. All right? Yahweh Shapat, that's what he's going to plead with them there. And by pleading, he means judge them there. 
and and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land and the Africans had a hand in that these Arabs the dirty Ishmaelites had a hand in that and the so-called white man Esau definitely uh, is, is the main major part in that man in our captivity All right and it says um and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink that they might drink all right you damn africans y'all was doing that selling our people for wine um you nigerians yeah, you northern africans uh oh was it, i think it's a south african so like them south africans you know they were selling us for um for guns and wine and, and dragging us through the fucking woods and catching us and pointing us out saying that's a israelite right there and they were selling us so they can protect their families you know they were trying to protect their family keep esau from going after their families so they'll point us out and they'll drag us long miles all the way to the shores to get on the slave ships and and, and through that uh travel they would take us to um through the jungle and through the jungle we'd be starving we'd be stepping over dead bodies our ancestors our, our family members all throughout the jungle and tigers was ripping up people our people apart before we even got to the ships you know so that's the part that's what that's what these damn africans did to us man all right and the so-called white man and the arabs and you got to pay for that uh a thousand years is a day to the lord so nothing was forgotten now you got these africans in the stores in america they got all the stores in the hoods in america the arabs all y'all sold out man all y'all had a hand uh in our in our uh downfall with esau all right all these nations man they ate lovely off america and off of esau it says yea and what had you have you to do with me o tyr and zidon right those are the, those um those were those uh, uh african countries man at that time those coastal countries of um over there in the middle east all right, the, um, off off of the shore, all right, Tyre and Zidon, and all the there you go, kind of all the coast of Palestine, right? That's where the Philistines were at originally, but now you have different. Um, they was over in the area, right? But then you have uh, uh, the Palestine, the, all the coast of Palestine, so that whole Middle East area now. All right, will you render me a recompense? If you can recompense me swiftly. And speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head, because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it into your temples, my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their borders. And that's just clear, man. And they removed us far from our borders that way, man. And we lost our land. We, you know, we were sold into slavery. And that's where we completely was, you know, uh, what do you say? Erased from being the people. And right, we fell. But now we're being brought back. All right. But anyway, I'm staying on track. It says, uh, verse 8, um, verse 7, Behold, I will raise them out of the place whether the whether ye have sold them right kind of I was just saying that that's the spirit and will return your recompense upon your own heads and this is directly towards the ethiopians these russians america esau china <laughs> these arab countries the palestinian countries these syrians all of them man and i will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of judah and they shall sell them to the Sabians to a people far off for Yahweh have spoken it proclaim ye this among the Gentiles prepare war wake up the mighty men let all the men of war draw near let them come up all right so prepare the mighty men that's what he's doing man he's building up all these the Lord is um you know accumulate uh mustering all these armies up together man but this is the point it says beat verse 10 it says beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. 
right? And that's that's them uh, uh, building up their nuclear capability, right? And advanced nuclear systems and all that, man. And now Ethiopia even saying they're strong. So just how powerful is Ethiopia? Well, the nation resides on the eastern horn of Africa and is nearly twice the size of Texas. It is bordered by countries like Eritrea, Kenya, Sudan, and Somalia. Historically, the Ethiopian Empire was one of the only African nations strong enough to fight European colonization efforts during the scramble for Africa. Thus, Ethiopia has become a role model for African independence. Many other African countries use the flag colors of Ethiopia in solidarity. Ethiopia has the continent's fifth strongest military, but worldwide they rank 46th, just above Argentina. We have oh yeah, the fifth strongest military, man. That way, said all of them what armed to the teeth, all of them wearing helmets and bucklers, man. They had their troops, one hundred eighty-two thousand five hundred active front line personnel, two thousand three hundred tanks. So that's an army, man. All right, um, you know. So if they if they backed by uh, Russia, then that's that's gonna be a, a proxy war set up for America. When they send, uh, what they say, to make way, when the Lord dropped the, the Euphrates River to make way for the kings of the east to, to head over to Israel and all them countries to head over to America, you know, then with the Warsaw Pact, which is going to be um, a lot of them NATO troops. You know, a lot of them NATO troops are Africans, man, and they're going to be, they operating on this soil. They're talking about sending them to damn Chicago. All right. But in this sense, this is going to be World War Three when Russia steps in and has armed and equipped all these smaller foreign countries, you know, armed them to the teeth. <laughs> Nearly 200,000 active frontline personnel and thousands of tanks. They also provide significant military and police personnel to the United Nations peacekeeping forces. Ton, I just said that, man. All right, that's spirit too. However, much of their arsenal is said to be outdated and from the Soviet era. Ethiopia is a low-income nation and one of Africa's poorest, but with its huge population, it is one of the fastest growing economies on the continent. Fastest growing economies on the continent. America is one of the fastest falling economies on the continent. <laughs> I mean, on, on the earth, I mean. Right? The gross domestic product is uh, four forty-seven billion right now. That's how much they bring in compared to what they uh, give out, man. All right, or, or give out compared to what they they buy, right? Compared to what they sell. So they bring in forty-seven billion GDP. Their GDP is about forty-seven billion dollars and ranks roughly eightieth in the world. While they don't have significant oil reserves like several other wealthy right. in America, their debt is higher than their GDP. Right. African nations, they do have booming agricultural industries. Their primary exports are coffee. All right, I'm going to go to something else. This is Isaiah 13 and uh, 13. Therefore, will I shake the, he uh, the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of Yahweh of hosts of armies and then the day of his fierce anger right and it shall be as a chaste row who is esau these other nations man all right esau gonna be as a chaste row upon the earth the same way uh, we were upon the earth man all right we were chased anywhere we seen esau they would chase us down and hang us and that's how esau is gonna be in that day all right and and as a sheep that no man taketh up they shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone to his own land. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. All right, because... Uh, America has no money. America can can make promises of gold and gold bonds, but everybody tired of gold bonds because there's nothing back in it. Gold certificates. Everybody want to. They, they want the real gold. And Russia, China, and all these foreign countries, they got the real gold right now. They got the real silver. So there's nothing that America can do to get out of this ass whooping that's coming to them. 
they being boxed into a corner. All right, it says, um, so the Medes of Russia, verse 18, their bulls also shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb for uh, their eyes shall not spare children. All right, America's not sparing children over in these foreign countries. All right, they didn't spare children with us when they, when they um, took us captive. Verse 19, and Babylon, America, the glory of the kingdoms, glory of Europe, the glory of these NATO countries, the glory of the whole fucking world. They got rich off of her, man. All right. The beauty of the Chaldees, right, um, which is basically the Magi, which is southern, southern um, Babylon, southern Chaldea. Right? Excellency, which will represent um, Esau. Excellency shall be as when Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> so it's going to be as when the Lord th overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, man, with fire. You know, how he, he got y'all Africans before, y'all coastal countries. The Lord got at y'all before, and y'all didn't learn from that. Now the Lord going to get you Africans again with fire. He's going to burn you Africans up. He's going to burn Esau up. He's going to burn two-thirds of our people up that want to be Africans and be like Esau. All right, I'm going to play this clip. And right here it's talking about how Iran is planning to invest more in Ethiopia. Why? Because Russia's investing in Ethiopia. You know, in Turkey, in parts of Turkey, and also um, uh, uh, China, and also uh, Libya. You know, all these different countries, man. All right, Syria. So these are all the countries spoken of in prophecy, man, and they're all clicking up together, like, <laughs> building up their, their forces and econ economy against America's economy and Esau. All right, so it says, um, Iran plans to invest more in Ethiopia, man. All right, so um, before I play it, I'm going to get that scripture one more time. All right, this is verse Ezekiel 38 and 4. And I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws. Talking about Russia, turning back to the Soviet Union. They used to be ever since um, 1991 when they fell. And they've been brought back to that uh, in 2016. And, will, and I will bring thee forth and all thine armies... Horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Iranians, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, man. All of them with shield and helmet. So they're all going to be together. It says, Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. So prepare them. And that's what they're doing. They're preparing each other. And Russia is the main one that's militarily uh, pre preparing these uh, these nations, man. All right. Now I'm going to play this clip with Iran talking about uh, making stronger ties with Ethiopia. Ethiopia is currently experiencing an economic transformation journey, which is impressive to the international community. According to the Ambassador of Islamic Republic of Iran to Ethiopia, Ali Bahraini, Iran and Ethiopia have commonality of being symbols of the oldest civilizations, hence the need to strengthen their bilateral cooperation. Iran acknowledges the pace of economic development in Ethiopia and is offering its expertise. And uh, we acknowledge that Ethiopia has, has achieved a lot during last decade. And uh, our country is ready to... So they said they're acknowledging Ethiopia now. That's that's the most high raising these people up, raising you nations up, man. And all of a sudden you booming. No, that's the most high allowing you to, to do that, to flourish. He raised up nations, raised up kings, and tear down the king. All right? And the Lord mustering uh, uh, the host of this battle. I'm going to get that scripture. To support Ethiopia to continue this process. And therefore... Uh, I think there is uh, much room. I spoke over that, but what he said was, he see they 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 recognize that Ethiopia is growing and booming, basically, man. And now he's saying they want to help in that process. <laughs> so you heard it for yourself. That's Iran. All right, this is Isaiah thirteen and um, one. It says the burden of Babylon. Which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see, right? Uh, Isaiah saw this way back in uh, the 7th century BC. 
as the Lord showed him the destruction of America and not only Babylon uh, uh, back then in 539 BC when they fell to the Assyrians, but he was talking about America falling, right? This is what this is talking about right here. That I, uh, it says, lift up, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, that banner of the scriptures, right? The same way Moses lifted up the serpent, the staff in the wilderness, we lift up the banner upon this high mountain, this uh, wilderness uh, that Esau created, that Yahweh used Esau to create. Um, this government exalt the voice unto them shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles right we go out and teach every week and, and build up some and tear down some all right and point the finger at them and try to tell them and, and as pied pipers try to get them to dance to the song so they can go out and, and sing their song in the gates of the nobles and the nobles are talking about the um the rich elites of the uh east of esau all right uh, actually, all these nations, man, not even just Esau, but really Esau, though, right? The ambassador of the heathens. Verse 3, I have commanded my sanctified ones, and I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness, man. He's talking about the angels and his elect, right? And his armies. Verse 4, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, in the governments. Like as a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathering, gathered together. And that's what they're doing. Yahweh of the, uh, and actually we coming together too. That's what he's saying. He said a great exceeding army standing upon their feet. The children of Israel, the elect standing together in truth and sincerity and in the same spirit and unity and faith in Yahweh shot. All right. Uh, the, the, the dry bones. You know, he said, we, we're going to stand upon our feet in the army. So he, he must, he's bringing, he, uh, bringing us back together too. He said the dry bones begin to come together. I had the, I had the nation of Israel. So um, it says, um, the, the noise of a multitude in the, in the governments in the mountains, like as a great mul people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Uh, Yahweh of, of armies mustereth the host of the battle. All right, so who's mustering this host? Every everybody that's being called to this this damn war and to the table and to the forefront, you know, and, and to this theater. Yahweh Bashim Al is the one that's uh, uh, bringing this about because no man controls his footsteps. No man knows his tomorrow. The Most High has written your, your footsteps and mine. Right. And it says they come from a far country from the end of heaven, even Yahweh and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. The weapons of his indignation. So the Lord put the spirit on these heathens to create these missiles, man. Right, he said he, he created the smith that blew up the coal in the fire to bring forth an instrument to destroy And what destroyed the destroying winds, you know, the, the ICBMs. Verse six, how ye for the day of Yahweh is at hand and it shall come as a destruction from the almighty. All right. So, hey, and it says this, um, you, you Ethiopians that think y'all going to get out of this. There, verse seven, therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt. <laughs> and they shall be. Uh, afraid pains and sorrows shall take hold of them they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth they shall be amazed one at another their faces shall be as flames man so i read that in the uh, last uh video i did so but uh hey you, ethiopia is stepping up to the plate now all right and uh that's just it man they even got tensions with egypt right now different same way rome had tensions with them uh, uh, nations around it in the past. Now, Ethiopia is uh, basically claiming this spot, man, claiming this position, man, as a top dog in Africa. All right, with that, man, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, uh, Shalom, Ba Hashem, Yahushai, Ba Hashem, Harakakodash, Ma'amath, double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders, and Shalom to you, Akim and Akwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and the truth around the four corners of the earth. And uh, hey, the scriptures say at the end, they shall speak and not lie.
And it's 2018, the year of prophecy, man. So let's look for a lot of these prophecies to come to pass. All right. And uh, open up for the for uh, the end time day of judgment, man. So with that, I'm going to say, uh, Shalom.